So every now and then, people will ask me what my favorite chord is, and I'll usually try to have something wise to say, like, the next one. But in full sincerity, I think a lot of you probably already know, if you've been watching this channel at all, is that the major 7 chord is my favorite chord, and specifically the F major 7 chord. And more specifically than that, the major 7 chord as the 4 chord in a progression. So I'm going to ramble on a little bit about why this is my favorite chord, and just kind of talk a little bit about the differences of the same chords in the same key, and how where they fall on a particular scale degree has a really big impact on the chord. So basically, before I knew anything about music theory, I always gravitated towards this F major 7 chord right? And rarely was this played in the key of F. Usually this is my favorite chord in the key of C, all right? The key, the key of C being the most common key that a lot of songs are in. Now, quick recap, uh, every key has seven notes. The first, fourth, and fifth notes of that key become major chords. The second, third, and sixth notes of that key become minor chords, and the seventh is diminished, all right? So any one of those single notes can become a chord. Now, the chords in the key of C would be C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and C, okay? So, to take that one step further, the one and the four chord, both major chords, can become major seven chords. So C would become C major seven, F would become F major seven. So, uh, between those two chords, there really shouldn't be any difference except for their pitch, okay? But in the context of a song, in the context of a key, there's actually a really big difference, and we're going to talk about that right now. So like I said, uh, the 1, 4, and 5 become major chords. 1 and 4 become major 7. 5 becomes dominant 7. So G dominant 7 would be that 5 chord. Now, uh, one thing that I really use in my own songs a lot is using pretty much everything as a major chord, but specifically kind of hammering home that 4 chord, whether it's major 7 or not. Now, some people would call that a Lydian thing, a modal thing, Lydian being the fourth mode of a key, the major seven chord being the fourth seventh chord of a key, okay? Now, basically, kind of how I arrived on that, or one thing maybe, like, if you're interested in trying to find out what your favorite chord is or the differences between those, you can start just cycling through chords in a key. So if we just start playing, like, a C, major seven as the one chord of a key, and then maybe go into the two chord, D minor 7, you can kind of get a, a feel for what that is sounding like. Because there's three minor 7 chords in any key. It can be the D minor 7 in the key of C, the E minor 7, or the A minor 7. And if you just strum them a little bit and like stay firmly in the palette of C major, and then kind of pause on one, like I'm going to pause on the 3 chord you can kind of get a feel for how that chord relates to the other chords in the key. There's that two chord. And there's the six chord. So now if we continue up that, we've got the one chord, two, three, and then we finally get to four. And I always found myself kind of gravitating towards that four chord and falling in love all over again every time I hear that four chord, specifically when it's played as a major seven chord. The great thing about F major seven is it's actually easier to play than a bar chord F, which maybe when you're first starting starting out, that could actually be something you're really interested in. Because in most cases, you can turn an F into an F major seven, and it's going to sound not even just okay, it's going to sound better. So one thing I kind of want to do to maybe talk about how the impact of the four chord versus the impact of the one chord is to kind of use an example uh, of something uh, that I wrote. Now again, if you've been watching the channel, you probably see me turn almost anything possible into a, a major seven chord. But I do think it's, it's, I think it's interesting to kind of talk about just the impact of the four chord. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this song Black Clouds uh, as an example of how you can kind of like really hammer home on that four chord as a major seven and the impact that it'll have on a song. So basically that song, just the bare bones, the chords of it is A minor to an E minor back and forth. A minor to E minor. This is in the key of C. So this is a six to a three. Then finally a two D minor to a one, right? So six, three, and 
waltz. Six, three, six, three, two, one. No four chord to be seen. Okay? So we're firmly establishing it. This is either it's the key of C. A minor probably has the tonal center, if you've uh, been watching the tonal center videos. Uh, with the melody, it's like six chord, three chord, six, three, two, one. At this moment, there's nothing to do but ask myself what's even left to lose. Two. What's the point of a clean bill of health? Since my heart's been broken, I've worn it so well. There's that four chord, okay? So I was really thinking of it that to, to me, that four chord has a lot of impact, kind of really hammering home the next section, the chorus, if you want to call it, after being so firmly with kind of, you know, the usual suspect in a key. A lot of that six chord, relative minor of the one chord. Again, if these numbers are making no sense to you at all, definitely check out some of the chord building videos that I've made. But basically, I just kind of wanted to use this as an example of the difference a progression will have if you kind of go to the one. It's like a, a very traditional resolution would be if you just end up on that one chord, even as a major seven. Right, six to one to two to one as a major seven chord, and how that stacks up against you like six, three, two, one, four. Okay, so that sound is something that's really interesting to me, and again. Even before I could explain what it was, like a lot of songs that I liked had that sound to it. I had no idea what it was. I wasn't even thoughtful about why it was I liked certain songs more than others. And then as I kind of became more well-versed in music theory, I was able to distinguish that it's like, wow, that's like something I really gravitate towards to is the use of that four chord and getting kind of like a Lydian type sound. A lot of people think of modes more as scales. I like to think of them more of chords. Like they'll think of like the Lydian mode is like, okay, like A Lydian, for example, A with a sharp four, A major with a sharp four. I really kind of think of like Lydian being, oh, the major seven on the four chord. Again, two different ways of seeing the exact same thing. There's not like a right way or a wrong, wrong way. Now, another thing that I like to do is I like to treat the four chord like it is the one chord. And again, this isn't like official like music talk or music speak. Uh, I don't really even really hear people think of or hear people talk about this in this way. But uh, when I say I use the four chord like the one chord is kind of like that progression I just did where I went home. I, I'm almost thinking of home as the four, whereas you might think of it as the one. So again, I kind of did that progression, a six to a three, two, one then hang on that four chord, and then continue on to a six, five, four. Okay, so the chorus of that song, I'll link you to that song in the description if you've never heard it, but uh, the chorus of that is a six, or not a six, a four, to a six, to a five. So that would be F major seven, to A minor seven, to a G. And again, uh, the whole thing, at this moment there's nothing to do. But ask myself what's even left to lose. What's the point of a clean bill of health? Since my heart's been broken, I've worn it so well before. And then no one around me can tell the truth from this image I saw. When your guess is almost as good as mine. So that right there, that was a change in that chord. I took that G, which was a G7 or a G major, and the last time around, it's F major 7 to A minor 7 to G minor 7 to F major 7. So that's my way of thinking as that F major 7 as kind of temporarily becoming the one chord because, like we said, if we're in the key of C, C major 7 would be the one chord, a step higher than that, D would be minor 7, a step higher than that, E would be minor 7. So a 1, 2, 3, kind of goes in order like that, major, minor, minor. 
We're talking about a four, five, six. It's a major, major minor. So just the way that I was approaching that, not that you know this is like a correct musical way to think about this, this is just the way that I personally th thought about that was, now this F for this moment in time is my new one chord and the rules that apply to the one chord, almost like a mini, like a key change into the key of F, where now two is G minor and three is A minor. So the fact that I was going from an F major seven to an A minor seven, to a G minor seven for that one time, just that real quick switch. Some people might see that as borrowed chord. Some people might see that as altering an existing chord by introducing new note, just flattening the third, whatever. However you look at it, if you like the sound of it, that's kind of like a cool thing to maybe be thoughtful about. And I kind of like the impact of changing that into a minor seven chord. In my mind, I'm changing that into the two chord in the key of the F. All right, and again, that just comes from treating, thinking of the four chord as the new one chord. Again, key change, whatever, however you want to look at it. That's just kind of like my thought process behind some of that. And I kind of feel that this song is a good example of that sound. And then going back to it a lot. Because it's not a traditional resolution. Until you take that G, make it a minor seven, and then it seems more traditional, but it's kind of not because we've been playing in C the whole time. So it's almost just kind of like, you know, an ambiguity. And to me, that kind of thing is really interesting in songwriting, where maybe it's doing something, I don't know if you want to call it unexpected, just doing something a little bit different and trying to change things up a little bit every now and then. We'll have just like a cool, maybe impact in your playing, in your songwriting, I, I definitely know it did for me. And again, like I said, I didn't know any of this stuff. I played for like 10 years before I even knew what like the four chord in a key was. And then once I started learning it, I was able to diagnose from what some of my favorite players were doing in songs, some of my favorite parts of songs, some of my favorite chord progressions. I could kind of analyze that. So my challenge to you would be to maybe take some of your favorite chord progressions from artists that you really like and admire that maybe you want to kind of take some of what they do and put it in your own playing, which is a great thing to do, and kind of see what it is that makes them different from other artists. And maybe be like, oh, well that guy uses like a lot of like Dorian stuff, which would be like maybe taking, you know, the two chord and adding that sharp six. Or maybe that guy uses like a, mi a lot of minor six chords, or maybe they use a major seven on the five, which it shouldn't be. You know, that would be like a, like a C major seven, as a one to a major seven on the five, you know? Sometimes stuff like that might sound really awful to you, you know? But uh, I think just being thoughtful about chord progressions and uh, incorporating, uh, you know, cool techniques and maybe different kind of tricks that other guitar players have, whether it's chord stuff, whether it's soloing, whether it's just composition and arrangement, is something that I personally know really, really helped me in my songwriting and then kind of like opened a door and being able to be creative. And that all really stemmed from just something that I intrinsically liked a lot, which I wasn't able to even describe because I didn't understand the theory. But once I finally did learn the theory, I was able to be like, all right, diagnose that. And then I can kind of use it as a trick, like, you know, like, a, like in your toolbox to to kind of make something more like that. Like if I'm ever stuck or if I'm writing something, you'd be like, you know what? Put that major seven on it. Boom, make it awesome. So again, that was just a very long-winded way of me explaining what my favorite chord was, F major seven. And if you have any comments uh, or questions, or if you just want to join me in solidarity of repping team four as a major seven, please hit me up uh, in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and I will talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.